question here is domestically generated, not imported from the rest of the world. He agrees with our friend uh, and the future leader of the Liberal Party, Mark Carney, who says that inflation is coming from Canada. But interestingly, the governor says that the solution is to cap wages and cut jobs. He says the only way to stop inflation is to drive up unemployment. Does the government agree that it needs to kill jobs to fight the inflation that this government has caused? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, what our government believes in is an economic approach which is both compassionate and fiscally responsible. In fact, here is what the Globe and Mail, which as a rule doesn't agree with our government's policies, had to say about the fall economic statement. And I quote, it is, broadly speaking, the right approach. Canada has the slimmest government shortfall in the G7. In inflation-fighting terms, that has Liberal fiscal policy looking pretty good, especially graded on a curve. Here, here, here. The leader of the opposition. Well, what's not looking pretty good is the cost of diesel. In New Brunswick, it's over three dollars a litre. Diesel is not a luxury, it's a necessity when you live in the country and drive a big truck. It's a necessity for the truckers that bring us our goods to our grocery stores. No wonder we have 11, we have 11 percent food price inflation. And home heating bills are not looking any better. They're going to double this winter. And families in oil-heated communities will have to spend thousands of dollars. Cutting their subscription to Disney will save them 13 bucks. That's not enough to pay the bill. But what would help is if they cancelled the plan to triple the tax. Will they? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, every single member of Parliament who sits in this House is privileged. We all earn good salaries, and we have hard-working staffers who support us well. I absolutely recognize how privileged my family and I are, and that's why in the fall economic statement tabled earlier this month, we focused our government's finite resources on helping the Canadians who need it the most. We did that by doubling the GST credit providing a $500 top-up to Canadians struggling to pay the rent, and providing dental care for Canadian kids. Leader of the Opposition. Well, if she really wanted to empathize with the low-income people who are struggling, then she and her NDP coalition partners would cancel their plan to triple, triple, and triple the carbon right. tax. They want to do it at a time when house he home heating bills are expected to double, costing thousands of dollars for families in oil-heated communities, when diesel prices are over three dollars a litre, Mr. Speaker, Canadians cannot afford it, nor can they afford to spend six thousand dollars on the Prime Minister's hotel rooms, nor do they need lectures about canceling Disney Plus. Will they cancel the carbon tax instead? The Honourable Minister of Immigration. Country that's recently seen the most severe weather event over the course of my entire life. But what really upsets me is that we know there is more to come. We know since the time I was born until the turn of the century, the average insured losses in this country were between $250 and $450 million a year for severe weather. Now it's almost $2 billion annually. A few years. I want everybody to pay attention to their whips, please. Thank you. The Honourable Minister for Immigration, from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, I have a better solution than people listening to their whips. Turn the microphones on in the background so you can hear members on that side denying climate change is a real threat to Canadian communities. Mr. Speaker, the reality is 
the cost of inaction is too great to ignore. We are dealing with hundreds of millions, probably billions of dollars of losses that have torn down silos, destroyed wharves, and caused untold damage to property in my community. The plan to put a price on pollution is actually going to give more money back to families who live in our communities. If the opposition, for the third time in a row, wants to camp on a commitment to take money from families, they can triple, triple, triple down on a strategy that's going to keep them in opposition for a the honorable member. And a quote from the Wall Street Journal, which had an article about Canada's children's medication shortage. Mark Parrish, president of the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Wholesalers, a trade association with member, members in 19 countries, says that no other country is experiencing similar shortages wow. as Canada is. That forces our parents to drive south of the border and buy the medications in the United States where they are abundant and in supply and bring them back here. Many people are actually hawking them with a profit back in this country. Again, why are these medications available abroad but not here at home? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to repeat the, the answer in English this time. The question is, is right. No, the stress that families and children are going through is real. That's why we were pleased with collaboration with other producers and free theaters, partners over the last few weeks to increase, to see an increase, a substantial increase in the production, home production of analgesics for children. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, just a few hours ago, we announced an important importation of a few months additional supply of analgesics for children, which will make a big difference in the ability of children to be cared in Canada. Leader of the Opposition from the Minister of Netflix. Maybe instead of advising Canadians to cancel their $14.99 a month Disney Plus subscriptions, the Minister can do the right thing and cancel their government greed instead. The government told us the whole point of the carbon tax was to lower emissions. They spent over $100 billion since 2015 on the environment. And despite what the Prime Minister says, emissions are up and Canadians are out of money. Why won't the Liberals give Canadians some relief and cancel their inflation tax? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. You know, Mr. Speaker, what should be cancelled is the reckless advice that the Conservatives offered to Canadians and for which they have never apologized, which was to invest in crypto. If a Canadian had invested $10,000 in crypto when the Conservative leader told them that was a good idea, Today, they would have less than three and a half thousand dollars. Wow. If they had invested in a crypto exchange platform, they would be totally wiped out. What should happen, Mr. Speaker, is that the Conservatives should apologize and withdraw that representation. Well, member for Thornhill. The private jets have landed and the limousines are idling in Egypt for a UN climate change conference where the minister is claiming to save the planet. Meanwhile, in Canada, struggling Canadians are paying record high prices for their costly plan that hasn't even reduced emissions. Private jets and limousines for these Liberals and higher prices on gas, groceries and home heating for Canadians. When will they admit their pl plan isn't working, park the jets and scrap the carbon tax they plan to triple? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member knows that 8 out of 10 families will be...